Hi, Consuelo. How's it going there? Can you hear me? Hello. I can hear you. Hi. Great. Great. Good morning. Is your day going okay? My day is going fabulous. How is your day going? Fine and nonstop and really great to connect again. So you're doing great things in the midst of a pandemic when a lot of people related to the arts are kind of scaling back and they're not sure what to say. But when did you realize, hey, we have to support the arts even when times are tough? Um, well, it's so good to see you. And I love your Pac-Man. And I wish I was there <laughs> with you right now playing Pac-Man. That was my favorite game on the planet. Is that working? Just need to know this. It works. There's a lot of other arcade games. And when you come out to Long Beach, New York, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I actually realized it kind of from the get-go, from the second that everything started uh, exploding and people were terrified, right? The entertainment industry, and obviously you know very well, I mean, it employs over 30 million people, right? Mm -hmm. Generating $2 trillion a year, like crazy staggering numbers, right? About what the entertainment's doing. And what I started to see was our members who are normally on tour, session musicians, choreographers that are on tour, like this extraordinary talent that now has nowhere to go and no job opportunities right now. And what do we do to help them? So, um, we created them with my partners, Muse Tech. We created this live, wonderful entertainment variety show, right? Which has been the greatest, selfishly, honestly, being an artist myself, because I get to do sound checks with the artists, to spend time with them, to really know what they're, and honestly, a lot of them actually are really nervous doing this because why you're in a vacuum. You have no one to respond to you, right? They're not laughing. They're not there. Like the crowd's not feeding on, like there's right. just you, yourself and yourself. So what I've loved about this is that not only our Soho Muse and Muse Tech team are helping to support them so that they're never alone, but also that they're so their fans and new fans are really engaging with them. Right. Well, you just hit the nail on the head. Not only are you doing this, but you yourself are an artist, are a creative person, are a multifaceted person. So when somebody says, Patoyo, what do you do for a living? Who are you? How do you like to introduce yourself or be thought of? Uh, uh, please, could someone tell me who am I? I don't know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, I got a person, let's answer like that. I have no idea. Um, I always start with being an artist first and foremost, and I'm an entrepreneur. So, you know, I've done wonderful things in my life and, you know, I've had a fashion company and uh, which has been amazing. Um, but, but I really, I love the connection between entertainment, technology, business. Um, I think being an entrepreneur gives us the right, just like you to really kind of be people that just are visionaries who just come up with the ideas and, you bring in extraordinary, better minds, right? More sophisticated minds in their fields to really bring an idea to fruition. So that's, that's what I love doing. I love just generating and I love pulling people together. I love connecting. You're a connector. Yes. I can only imagine though that being quarantined, you know, aside from all the, the, the in economic impact and all the lifestyle changes, it kind of changed what you were doing in the months ahead. Am I right about that? Did you have to cancel or postpone a lot of things? I did. Yeah. I mean, you know, we had just literally come back from London Fashion Week um, and really helping our members there. Uh, we also then launched and did a big event in LA for the Oscars and launched our virtual screening room, which is so exciting. And, you know, helping additional films right now to get financing and distribution. Um, so it did. It kind of on our live side and our event side and our kind of our schedule for that, it definitely, it pushed a lot of things in that level. Um, but what it also did in, a, in an amazing way, it allowed us to really reach out and spend a lot more time with our members. Mm -hmm. So user growth, um, finessing, thinking and understanding what more that they needed that maybe we weren't servicing to them before. So that's been a really an amazing gift. We're also launching a podcast it became oh. also an incredible gift in this that so amused were our members are curating and creating so much content 
that our portal now to be able to actually help them on the promotion and distribution side has become really opened up. So job opportunity there has become a really extraordinary avenue as well. So to ask you about right there. Wow, that you know, alone. It's, it's, so it's pivoting and being agile enough to kind of say, you know what, during these times, this is just, these are unprecedented. We, I have been overusing that word, but it is. It's the unknown and how in the unknown do we make the world and the lives, as far as I'm concerned, of, of our artists better and, um, and more of a safe place. So, hmm. And yeah. your organization is invite only or you have to select who gets invited. Are there any thresholds that people should be mindful of? Because I'm sure more people hearing about this in general will go, I want to be part of that. What is it that they have to do or be able to say that they do in order to get in there? So, um, good question. It's, it, let me be very clear. It's not an elitist model, meaning eh, we look at your work and we decide you are not, not at all. So the Soho Muse is derived in three tiers. I, um, last year we launched our tier one uh, with a company called Entity in it's Entity Magazine and it's a whole female education program, which is amazing. We did this event with Patricia Arquette and I started speaking at FIT and a lot of institutions to really learn about young talent and what were they doing and where did they learn how to kind of build their their business narrative, right? Who, right. who are they gonna be in the creative world? So we launched our tier one for up and coming talent. So people who have a creative interest and we vet through that. So really working in all the institutions, right? Mm -hmm. And then our tier two is creative working professionals. Um, so that's amazing from the Nicole Millers and the fashion designers, Milan Breton, right? Sc huge screenwriters. And then our tier two is our Soho Black um, where we have you know, another tier of extraordinary talent that's there. And that's more project-based. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, we have one of our exceptional award-winning uh, filmmakers who's doing their next project on the site. So it's kind of derived in that way. So I look at, we can build and help to inspire the lifespan actually of an artist, giving them internship opportunities to build in their mentors from tier two and tier three. Um, and so that's how the, we vet our tier two members based on the fact that they are who they say they are and they're working in the field that they are. Did I read correctly that Tiffany is an artist participant in the program? She was amazing. My God, she was, she, Tiffany rocked. Let me tell you, that woman is amazing. I mean, and she stripped when she was doing her concerts, she was very raw and spoke about her songs and the journey of her songs so that it really helped to engage her fans who probably never could get this kind of up close and personal with her, um, for her to be able to communicate with them. They ask questions, she responds, they understand more about her stories. Why were they like that? And she's got a voice, I mean, killer voice. And she's a rocker. So, you know, what maybe what people would have, and that's what I love about music, what people may have known her for, you keep evolving, right? Right, right. So. A lot of people look at the current businesses that have become more profile, uh, high profile during the pandemic as being a temporary thing like, oh, well, once people start going out again, this is over. It doesn't sound like it's that case at all on any level for you. It sounds like not just a uh, calling in the growth of, of the organization, but this is what you do. Yeah, thank you for saying. Um... Yeah, I don't, I, you know, I, I look at this right now as something that's, you know, this is a life's journey for me. I've been doing this for many years. Um, we've done a lot of R&D to be where we are right now. And I think that, um, no, actually more so than ever, I think that we're right in the, the cusp right now of actually breaking molds and providing opportunities that our members may have not been able to have before. So I look at this as just the beginning because you're right. This is not, there are businesses, of course, that this was, this was an interim phase. Right. But I think we have to look at so many people have lost so much, their homes, their jobs, their families. Like how do you reconstruct the retail business? My God, like, right. 
So you got to be innovative now. And in how are we selling? How are we showing our works? Right, all of that. So. And, and then for you as an artist yourself, is there anything in the pipeline that you can talk about? Oh yes, soon. In so soon. I can tell. I can tell you, and I promise you, I will come back to you in the <laughs> announcement of this. Yes, I okay. that I promise. Yes. It is, it is all brewing right now. Now, like before COVID, I, a lot of people are struggling to remember, even though it's only been about three months since a lot of people started staying in and things started shutting down. But what was the last concert that you went to before you, like everyone else, kind of became a shut-in? Oh, God. Um, what was the last concert that I went to? I went to something at, in New York, 52 Below. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I do, and it was, was it a jazz night that I saw? I think it was a jazz night. Um, I'm just thinking, sorry. It's like, yeah, I think that that was the last thing that I went to. It was 52 below. It was a jazz night and it was just kind of, I think four to five different artists that were all doing something, you know, really unique and different. Um, and that was really fun. Um, yeah, it's, oh my God. I, it, it seems like such a blur and I'm so sorry that I'm not able to just like be like, ah, it was that. I can, I, yeah. I've seen more virtual online concerts than I have probably gone to main concerts in a long time. Yeah. For sure. That's something I like to ask people, no matter their field. I, I interviewed a famous golfer yesterday and I said, what's the last concert you went to? And it was, uh, the Foo Fighters. I took my kids. And it seems like everybody either remembers instantly or it's just a big blur i think i had somebody say beyonce at metlife stadium and that might have been six years ago so <laughs> some people are just not concert people i love going to concerts right i do but you're yeah i think there's too much going on <laughs> i've got no that that's the one thing i don't know about you but i feel like the sense of time mm -hmm. you i just it's just don't know how are we June sixteenth today? Like, how is that even possible? Yeah, time is flying. Not that we're having fun, but time is flying. So, two quick questions, and then you are free to do what you want today. <laughs> um, first one is in being you know shut in like this. Any TV shows or movie discoveries that you can tell anybody hearing this or reading this that they should be up on? Um, I have to tell you, I just discovered this amazing show called The Strangers on Netflix. Okay. Do you know this? I've heard the name, but I haven't seen The Strangers. It's sick. It's really <laughs> warped. It is really twisted, but it is brilliant. My goodness. So if, if you like um, thrillers, detective, it's an English show, which I love English shows. Um, so that is definitely to get you. It's one of those like, binge watching, you can't stop yourself. You don't, you want to turn the TV off in the middle of the night. You're like, please, no more. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> it's one of those, <laughs> it's one of those great shows. So I've been doing actually, I've been doing a lot more TV watching than actually films. Mm -hmm. You, have you seen anything good that you can recommend? Oh yeah, this, um, did, you, uh, did you like the show It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Yeah. Okay, the Canadian version of that is called Letter Kenny. One word, Letter, Letter Kenny, like the town in Ireland. And okay. you're going to watch the first two or three episodes and go, they talk funny, I don't get it. And then once you realize they're all recurring jokes, it's comedy gold. I think it's going to be in its ninth season soon. It's on Hulu. Okay, Letter Kenny. Letter I will go and I'll check that out. First three episodes, you're not going to like. <laughs> okay. You, give you just get past it and then you got to get into it. I got it. Exactly. So my closer, any last words for the kids? Um, you know, my hope right now is, is that everyone is safe. Um, I am not a political person because everything that I subscribe to in our site is about um, being open, open to race, open to religion, open to your political views. We don't uh, discriminate. But my, my real hope actually is, is that we all find our heart and unity somehow, because it's getting very loud. And I want the loudness to stop to actually make a difference. 
mm. you know, just hearing noise. It's, it's all, it's all horrific. There's nothing good, but we got to make, we got to make a change. So again, I am not, I'm not of a political voice. It's not where I come from. Um, I don't think anyone would really want to see me talking about <laughs> politics. <laughs> just say, I think you need to know your lane. And that's not a, that is not a lane I would be talking about. I, I'm a person that I talk from my heart and, um, and there's a lot of sadness. So I just hope we find our way soon. That so, is my. If I can recap everything you just said, people need to come together. People need to be supporting the arts. Artists need to keep doing arts. You've got art yourself in the near future coming up soon. You might have found a new calling beyond everything else you're doing, and you're not political, and I think we're good. And that's good, great. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. We'll get this posted within the next week and all that, and have your team keep me posted on anything and everything you got going on. You're amazing, thank you so much. I really appreciate this, thank you. Stay well, take care, Consuelo. Bye now. Outro.